Hello, hello. How often do you find yourself entering the same thing in your most used Mac applications? What if I told you that there was a way to completely automate this process without needing to remember text expansion snippets? Let's jump right into it. So as discussed in episode 61, text replacement is great, but it requires us to remember a bunch of snippets and it is not super suited for entering information in application windows that present multiple fields. This is the case, for instance, when creating a calendar event, when you need to enter the topic, an agenda, and in some cases you may even have uh, to um, add participants that you want to invite. If you have embarked into time tracking, there are also various fields that you need to fill, like the task, the project, and the tags. In all cases, templates can help for sure, but only when you want to have time entries that are always the same. When there are some slight variations from time to time, then you need something else. And this is where automation can help you. And in case you didn't know that, your Mac ships with a dedicated tool called Shortcuts. Put simply, Shortcuts allow you to stack different actions on top of each other like you would with Lego bricks. So the same way that there are different brick shapes and brick sizes, you will find different kinds of actions in Shortcuts. Some can interact with applications installed on your Mac, for instance, to fetch your next appointment or to create a reminder or to append some text to a note. Some will allow you to input data either through a text field or by providing you a list of options to select from. Some actions will allow you to manipulate data either through calculations in case of number and dates, or also by processing text, by splitting text, for example. And some actions provide the automation with some logic. Uh, so if a condition is met, do this thing. Otherwise, do that other thing. And if you need to, there are also actions that allow you to repeat different operations. You can also make the automation wait for you. And so the same way that most Lego bricks can be stacked together, the shortcuts actions can also do the same. Some actions will be interconnected, but others can be independent from each other. The same way that if you take an example of a Lego set with a house and next to it you have a swimming pool, in shortcuts is the same. Now, if you remember the good old Lego manuals, well, <laughs> with shortcuts you will do the same, except that once you have built this step one, step two, step three, step four process or automation, you just need to click a button and it will run the whole sequence again. You don't need to do each step manually one at a time after all. Now, you may still think, oh, geez, Damien, yeah, it sounds complicated. But in fact, it's quite simple and it's quite easy to pick up. The most important is to start with a small but recurring repetitive typing annoyance that you can't solve using text replacements or templates. And if you don't know where to start, I recommend to open the shortcuts app on your Mac and you visit the gallery section. There you will find pre-built automations that are made by Apple. And even though most of them won't necessarily reduce repetitive typing, they can certainly start making your life easier. Now, to give you a more concrete idea, I will share with you an automation that I have created to help me customize time tracking entries related to the MacPreneur podcast that would otherwise require repetitive typing. 
And the best part is that I can use that automation on both my Macs, my iMac and my MacBook Pro, but also on my iPhone and my iPad, simply because I have Timery on all my devices, the automation is synchronized automatically via iCloud, and more importantly, the steps that I've used in that automation are universal across all platforms. Now, here is the overall flow of the automation. Step one, it shows me a list of activities related to the podcast. So, brainstorm topics, prepare episode, record episode, edit episode, and so on. So, the whole process, if you want. I just need to click and select the one that I want. Now, if it's a brainstorming activity, it will go to step three. But if it's a different activity, then I want to be able to put the episode number. So it will ask me, what is the episode number? I will type that number. That's it. That's the only thing I type. Then after that, it will ask me the last question, which is, when do you want that time entry to start? And I have three options. Now, five minutes ago, or at the last stop time. Now, if you don't know Timery, I've covered it quite extensively in episode 55. Basically, this is one of the parameters that Timery gives when creating a time entry. So I just use that feature in the shortcuts automation. And so once I've entered the information, selected what I wanted, the shortcuts automation will automatically start a Timery timer. And the only thing I needed to type was the episode number. And also because I'm able to pre-configure in the automation, the project and the tags, it also helps me reduce the number of clicks. So it's a double whammy if you want. Now, if you already use Timery and you would like to see what this automation looks like, I will put a link in the show notes available at macpono.com for slash episode 63. You'll then be able to import that shortcut automation and you will be able to also start tweaking it right away if, if you'd like to. The next question that you might have at this point is, okay, I have a shortcut automation. How do I run it on my Mac? There are three main options. In the shortcuts app on your Mac, there is a configuration button. If you click on that one, there is a details uh, section and there you will have just an option to tick pin in menu bar. So in the menu bar, in the top right corner, next to the clock and so on, you will see a shortcut icon. You can click on that icon and you will see the list of pinned automations. So that's one way. Another uh, way to launch uh, shortcuts automation, uh, same place, so configuration button, details, you have also the, ab the ability to add a keyboard shortcut. Now, even though it seems tempting, uh, I would only do that for those kind of automations that you do multiple times a day. If you do this automation uh, from time to time, once a week or something like that, uh, be careful because right, you, you need to make sure that this keyboard shortcut does not conflict with other keyboard shortcuts. But it's an option. And then last option is to save the shortcuts automation as an application where you will see an icon in your dock. And so afterwards, it's just a matter of clicking on the icon on the dock. So to do that, you open shortcuts, you locate the desired automation, you will right click on that automation and there you will see an option that says add to dock. Now, what happens in the background is that the shortcuts app will create an application, so the name of your shortcuts dot app, it will be saved in an applications folder, but within your home folder. It's not the main applications folder that you see usually on, on the left side by in the favorite section. You need to go to your home folder where you have 
documents, images, videos, and so on, you will see also an applications folder. The advantage of saving a shortcut as an application is that it can be launched then via Spotlight. So you do command space, you start typing the first letter of your automation, and you will be able to launch it like that. But because it's an app, you can also then launch it via a hardware device like a Stream Deck, for instance. You can assign that application to a button, and that's what I've done with that MacPreneur time tracking automation. I've assigned it to a button on my Stream Deck, so I just press a button, it launches the automation, I select the few things, enter the episode number, and here I go. Um, so just while talking, I realized, so we are stacking now productivity techniques together, right? So we not only reduce repetitive typing, but by using uh, spotlight or keyboard shortcuts, we are also reducing unnecessary clicks. So to recap, the goal of this episode was to explore automation as a way to minimize repetitive typing on your Mac. It's a slightly more advanced technique that is super useful when neither text replacement nor templates can help you. And it also has a side benefit that it can reduce unnecessary clicks at the same time. I've started by introducing shortcuts, then I provided a specific automation example when it comes to time tracking with Timery. I finished by exploring the different ways that one can launch shortcut automation on a Mac easily and quickly. In the next episode, episode 64, I will start diving deeper into strategies and techniques to reduce file clutter. So that's it for today. If you'd like to receive personalized tips on how to tame the three killers of Mac productivity, I've prepared a free quiz available at macpreneur.com forward slash score. So visit macpreneur.com forward slash score for personalized tips on how to boost your Mac productivity today. And until next time, I'm Damien Schroes, wishing you a great day. You've been listening to the MacBurner podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please leave a review and share it with a friend right now.